Ace, bring it with us. We need something. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Here, catch. Oh. Well, all right then. Welcome everybody, this is Ace Cosplay, and today we'll be building the Gears of War 5 Lancer Rifle. Now, a full ingredients list and templates will be located below. We'll be splitting it up into two videos, one covering how to build it and the other covering how to paint it. So let's get into the build, shall we? The Lancer Rifle is an automatic LMG based weapon that has a chainsaw bayonet, making it very iconic of the game franchise. The version we will be building today is specifically from Gears of War 5. It's a slight redesign of the original weapon found in Gears of War. The biggest difference is just really overall mechanic and especially the inclusion of a stock. Once you have your templates fully cut out, you'll take time to appreciate how much the lighting of this shot was screwed up. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't time this well. So here we go. You'll want to separate the template out into different segments, making the construction easier. I'd separate off the bayonet, the trigger guard, the teeth, and the stock itself. Just uh, pick up that little piece and put it back over there. Once you've done this, you'll tack down your template onto your phone. You do this so that the template doesn't move around while tracing it. If it moves during the tracing process, it can make the uh, final prop be a little disproportionate. So, you'll grab your marker and just go around the entire prop, slowly tracing it out. This can take a while, so be patient. Recommendation here would be to put on some nice smooth jazz. But oh, don't worry. If you have issues with your first one, you'll have a lot of practice, because you have to make approximately four of these. I say approximately because you can make it thicker or thinner depending on who the prop is for. But don't forget to at least flip one of these because you need to have a mirrored side with this flat texture. Don't forget this step. I did. So, you'll notice that this piece is a little bit different. This is a little thing that you might run into. Standard EVA foam has this hexagon pattern and that's easy to deal with. But this foam had a glossy wood grain, making it very slick. Contact Cement, the glue you'll be using for the build, doesn't exactly work with this. So, what you do is you'll go grab your piece of sandpaper and just uh, tear this thing off. Yeah, just, uh, just rub it. Take that, uh, you know what, this sanding by hand might take me a while. I have an idea. I don't know if that's very safe. <laughs> Yeah, no, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Just hold still. Now that we have that hide ripped off, we'll slowly begin painting the entire piece with contact cement. You paint both sides that you want to stick together because, well, contact cement only likes to talk to itself. So, you just slowly paint it on nice and thin. Give it maybe one or two layers. I find that works best. And then slap them down. Now you'll see we have a bit of overhang and beveled edges that need to be added. So you grab your Dremel tool and just slowly, carefully, add these little edges. It makes the prop have a more organic feeling and gives it the more realistic, machined look that the gun would actually have in-universe. Now you see here that after cleaning up all the edges, we have to do something to make it more uniform. You see, the sanding disc can leave a texture, so you'll grab this polishing stone and slowly run it across every edge that looks like it has a distortion in the texture. What this will do is it'll return it to its EVA foam standard cut from the machine texture. It just makes it a lot smoother and looking more professional. 
Now you begin the process of cutting all these little details off of the template and transferring them onto your raw foam. This is for adding your details. Now you'll notice that there is a section right here in the template that I'm pointing out that I'm going to need to raise. Raising this piece like this one here is a process called halving, where you quite literally will draw a line halfway through the piece of foam and slice the thing in half. As you can see, this is a mirrored detail, so I will have to cut this twice after tracing it once and flipping it over on the foam to get two sides with the right texture. Once you've done this, you will very carefully, and I do mean carefully, cut this piece in half straight down the middle. And once you've done that, you'll simply glue it together with contact cement. Next are the magazine covers, and these are simple. They have a little circular detail that might seem daunting to get the edge it needs, but just grab a Dremel tool and slowly carve away on the edge until you get a shape that looks something like this. A very nice rounded circular piece. And again, here we are just adding more details, making this thing look more three-dimensional, giving it a nice texture. Now you see here, I have a little trench cut into my foregrip. I did this just because I like the look. You don't have to do this, but it's a detail that I thought was easy. So you would just draw a little triangle into the foam with your razor pen, doing a straight line at the top and cutting at an angle on the bottom of it, giving yourself that nice little trench. And here comes the fun part, scoring. All of these little pinned on details, you will take your knife and slowly, slowly slice them out. Barely breaking the skin of the foam, you will carve these details out and hit them with a heat gun, opening them up as you can see, giving the prop a much more three-dimensional look and a far more detailed look. And finally, we have the fun part of adding the bayonet, the iconic part of this gun. So again, built up details, as with the rest of the prop. We just add them on slowly, halving pieces that need it, leaving pieces thick that need it, and now attaching it with contact cement, as we have done with everything else. Now, I will be honest with you, attaching this was difficult because of the weird shape, so just be careful, tamp it down with your hands, make sure it's nice and secure, don't rush this part. And there you go. You should have it on securely. Now, this part was not fun. Enjoy cutting 16 of the teeth for the chainsaw's blade. This was a very long, arduous task, but you should end up with about 16 of these nice little uniform, sharp, fake looking shark teeth shapes, essentially, that become the chainsaw's chain. And again, you just take your Dremel tool with a polishing stone and make it nice and smooth. And now you should have the chainsaw's bayonet attached to your Lancer rifle, looking very menacing, ready to cut up some grubs if I may say so myself. Now we work on the part that is not in the template, the Gears of War 5 technical stock. Now if you look at it, it has a more realistic modern military design with a big hole in the center of it, assumably to put a hook and loop for some kind of sling with extra popped out details. So I recommend cutting out that section during this phase and just kind of using the template as a measurement and basically measuring it to your body. Now this little detail I added just because I thought it would be best to take a piece of craft foam and slowly just mold it over the piece. This will cover up a lot of those seams without having to do any extra work, and it just looked nice, to be honest. Looked better than I thought it would. You can follow that step if you wish, or you can try another thing. I just found this easy. Tamp it down real hard though. It might come off. You just gotta hit it with a bunch of stuff, you know? Just keep, keep on hitting it, you know what I'm saying? Keep hitting it, come on, hit it more. Oh, well, okay, that'll work. And again, there's just a lot of detail that you have to build up for props like this, so don't skimp on the detail. Add what needs to be added. It'll pay off in the end. Trust me. It'll really pay off in the end. 
this has been a long uh, little record. We'll see how long this goes. Because <clears throat> as of now, I like this take. Oh, here we go. Now, this is something I want to point out right now because I will make point of it in a moment, but you should really run some kind of rod into your stock for stability. I forgot to do it at this stage, and you should do it before you glue it together. So I had to actually run a chopstick through the back of it all the way into the gun, as you can see here. Now you will want to grab a piece of PVC pipe and make your barrel. I did this just by simply carving out a little circular area in the foam. I didn't do this carefully, you kind of want to rip this area out, leave it a little jagged, and just slowly work your piece of pipe in. Super gluing it in place makes it stay there very tightly. And don't forget about your finger guard, because I mean, you gotta keep your finger protected, am I right? And I super glued this together because it was getting late and I, uh, <clears throat> I gotta get my beauty sleep. You know what I mean. And finally, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. A very well made, strong base of a prop. Just aching to get some detail paint work, which we'll get to. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You should now have a near complete Lancer rifle from Gears of War 5. Now, we'll cover the painting in part two, so don't worry. But for now, enjoy your rifle. See you next time.